Hi, greetings. It's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt. And this is one of the most important lessons that you'll probably ever hear. And you're thinking, yeah, right. Well, I want to talk about communication. And specifically, I want to talk about critical listening. We all know that listening is an important part of the communication process, probably the most important part of communication. But most of us probably have bad habits that are sabotaging our own successes. Uh, you've probably heard me say that we need other people to grow, and it really is true. I mean, sometimes if we are uh, just doing our own thing and we don't have other interactions with other people, uh, we're probably not going to grow as, as quickly as we are when we have the ideas and the insights of other people. We usually have at least one perspective on most things, but as other people come into the picture, they have the ability to share ideas with us that help us see more of the bigger picture or more about the phenomena that we're interacting in that can help us make the best decisions. And of course, life is all all about choices but if we don't know what those choices are and we don't have enough of the information to make the best choices possible those decisions can affect our levels of success hopefully that makes sense so life is all about decisions and choices and usually uh, when life isn't going the way that we really need it to go it's probably because we didn't take time to really reflect on what the best course of action is. And I know some people don't like to take responsibility for their own actions, but I'm a firm believer of everything in our life that happens to us, or most things anyway, are a result of our choices. It's not what happens to us, it's what we choose to do in every situation. And then of course sometimes we set things off, you know, a long time ago and we start to reap the result of that. And usually um, not listening probably in one way or another could be related to those failures. So I highly recommend that you consider the aspects of really critically listening, effectively listening through critical thinking. So let's talk about a few models and some definitions about listening and hopefully in this video it'll give you some information to help you be a better listener which ultimately will help you have a life that you truly love which is always my theme in my videos so let's get on with it today I want to talk about how listening works sometimes uh, we don't recognize that we uh, we get into these different modes and we assume a style of listening because we practice these things over and over again Again. And we, we, we often emulate what we see by our heroes. I know that my parents have influenced the way that I am today. And so we need to take a look at how we process these as a model. Listening. Uh, if we know that listening is so important, we really need to recognize what can I do to improve my listening skills. And so um, we need to first of all recognize that we have to have the motivation in every instance to be able to listen more effectively. We need to make sure that we are in a place where we have access to uh, uh, better listening abilities. And then we want to improve our listening skills. So that's motivation to listen, improving listening by through access, and then the skills. Uh, we need to think about critical thinking and listening. You know, are we really hearing the message through the right set of filters? Are we thinking through the processes of what do I need to get out of this information? We're going to talk about that in a little bit. So um, it really is about interpretation of messages. And if you haven't watched my last video, we, we talked about the communication process, about the coding and encoding. Uh, Secondhand information usually distorts uh, the true message. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, let's talk about wishful thinking, which affects how we perceive things. And then conventional wisdom and wise sayings. And then uh, language confusions and speaker uh, responsibilities. So I want to get right into talking about assuming a style. And essentially there are four different main styles of listening. The first style I want to talk about is reluctant. This is the style that we assume when we feel we think uh, we had better listening. 
And even if what is being said is distasteful, maybe you have a, a negative uh, relationship with your boss, and uh, but your boss has the power to hire and fire or make your life really hard. So, um, but you got to listen because it's your boss that determines your success in your workplace. So sometimes if you are a reluctant listener, your motivation to listen is kind of low, lower than it should be anyway. Appreciative uh, listeners uh, with appreciative listening style are generally more responsive, more discerning, and more interested than re reluctant types. Uh, motivation isn't the problem, but one may still not be an effective listening. So appreciation really is a powerful tool. I, I think that if we can find ways to appreciate other people, that's a good first step to really helping build meaningful relationships and benefit from what other people have to bring. Empathetic listening. And this is listening that takes place in order to imagine another person's experience. We, we have to kind of walk a mile in another person's shoes, as the saying often says. We have to be able to feel the same feelings that the other people are feeling if we truly have an understanding of that. And this is really about seeking to understand the feelings of whoever's speaking to you and being supportive in your listening style. Comprehensive listening. Uh, this is when uh, you have excellent skills in listening and you're really trying to understand the message that's being delivered, you know, comprehensively, the whole message. And it requires you to suspend judgment, to understand with the intent and depth that the message sender is giving. So really taking time to really listen. And these are some skills that uh, the best leaders have. The best leaders really can be empathetic and comprehensive in the way that they listen and they take time to be present in the moment, suspend all judgment, and really be motivated to really understand things from the other person's perspective. And there's a lot of power there. If you are someone who tries to be efficient in your listening, uh, you're probably going to be missing out on important details and then mistakes are going to be made and it takes so much more time to fix things than it really does um, to, to do things right the first time. That means really listening when the information is coming in at the right time. Critical uh, is another listening style and when we are uh, critical um, we, we have skills uh, that are fairly but firmly applied to what you're hearing, whether you're pro or con, neutral on the topic. Uh, your own interest and motivation to listen really is uh, generated. So are you really listening uh, critically? Are you listening to understand all different sides of that topic? And then there's aggressive. And we're aggressive, uh, you're opinionated, you are a watchdog, you really aren't listening and it really isn't effective. You've got all of these barriers that are coming up in your mind that are keeping you from really understanding uh, the message that could help you make the best decisions possible. And, and if you are that way, you have to be aware that you're that way or you're going to be missing out on some important information most likely. So you have to really recognize the model of how we listen. There's a, it's a process and uh, breaking it down you know we hear a sensation. If you think about listening, listening really is vibration. All sound is vibration. And um, when we get this auditory sensation um, it, it makes our body aware of something and so we need to become aware that there's a message that's coming across. Then we select uh, certain stimuli over others. I mean we've got a lot of things that are going on in the background noise right now. I have a heater going on in here in my office and you might be focusing on that rather than what I'm saying. So really be aware of the in the process model what we focus on we were selecting. 
So in the listening process, it goes from sensation to selection, interpretation, evaluation, and then response. That's the model, sensation, selection, interpretation, evaluation, response. So the message comes in, we give feedback, and we, we have to consider all the environmental inputs. So in this process model, let's break it down. And I'm going to give you some terms to consider. So with interpretation, uh, this depends mostly on your internal inputs, your knowledge, your past experiences, your beliefs, your attitudes, emotional blocks. You know, a lot of different things go into how we perceive uh, a message. And so we use something called attribution theory. And this deals with how and what we infer about the, the behaviors, attitudes, intentions in others and ourselves. So it, attribution is about attributing things. And so we have to recognize that we've always got filters going on. And we justify things through our attitudes. And we, we, we we reflect on how we feel about other people and those kinds of things we give more weight to or we give less weight to. And so we do that either in a discounting effect uh, which suggests that a given cause should be discounted if other plausible causes are also present or a, a co-variation principle which suggests that we often um, misattribute meaning and causes because we tend to work backward from behavior to uh, inferences about causes and often overlook other critical influences that co-vary. So really is important to really recognize that we are always having some sort of processes and uh, how much weight we give each process and how we are filtering things that affects our perception or how we process the, the communication. So when we are listening there's lots of different filters that are that that affect the way that we perceive the message itself. There's our feelings, our knowledge, our memories, our religion, expectations, things that happened to us as a child, and again our attitudes, beliefs, and values which goes down into our biases and prejudice and traumas and opinions about things and so all of these filters affect the way that we receive messages. So it's really important to really understand that uh, listening is so powerful and we may not be hearing things in the true interpretation about how things are met. So uh, in this process model that we're talking about, it's the evaluation that uh, we're always naturally doing and some of us are better at this than others but the good news is what I'm talking about uh, you can, if you're aware of the process you can make better so in evaluation that's when we are deciphering whether or not the message is accurate truthful helpful justified you know whatever you know if we're evaluating it we'll choose essentially to accept it or reject it and then we have this response both internally and externally so when we are responding internally it really deals with the final results in, in your perceptual and attributional efforts and it's an ongoing process we're always processing things internally and then externally this is where we manifest the communication that's when we give the feedback that's when we do things either verbally or nonverbally or combination of both and nonverbal can be in the form of something called back channeling and that um, sound these are sounds that encourage the speaker so some areas for listening improvement uh, we really learn to listen. We need to learn intentionally to, to listen uh, and be motivated to recognize that we may be missing out on an opportunity uh, to, to improve ourselves or to make better decisions because everything's about decisions, right? So we have to have uh, the motivation. We have to look, are we positively or negatively motivated? That's essentially all we have. And if you're negatively motivated, you're probably not going to hear things as effectively so it really wanting 
to understand from the other person's perspective the full comprehensive message is important. Uh, we can do this by really relating whatever's being talked about to our own personal interests. And so that, that really means you have to think in the, what's in this for me? How can I benefit from this other person? I know that this person is smart, or I know that this person sees things in a different way than me. I really want to understand his or her perspective. So there's a way for you to consciously really improve your motivation to listen. You have to translate the problem into an intellectual challenge. Aha! This person sees things differently than I do. I wonder what is uh, what I can benefit from this. So you really need to improve your motivation to listen better. Every person can and will make a positive difference if you choose that. Because everything's about choices, right? So, in order to improve your listening, you have to be able to improve listening access. That means eliminating noise. I mean, if, if you are having a conversation with an employee and there's lots of background noise going on, you probably aren't able to filter through that, all that noise. So you really should have a quiet, more quiet space where you can have one-on-one -on -one uh, attention for each other and be able to exchange ideas in the listening process. So access by a limiting noise is important. If you are tired, you are not going to hear things as effectively. I mean, being able to actively listen means you can't be tired. So fatigue affects our ability to really truly interpret the message right. So avoid fatigue. Get enough sleep every day so that when you are making the best decisions possible uh, you are bringing in the best information. So when you may have uh, hearing deficiencies you really have to do things to make sure that you are hearing the words and the messages in the right way so that you can improve your interpretations. Uh, we need to uh, learn uh, relevant language and vocabulary, especially through reading. You know, though we a limited vocabulary really does mean we have a limited ability to accurately understand concepts and ideas. So the more that we read, the more that we learn new words that better describe things which help us to better really understand concepts more fully. So build your vocabulary, read every day. Uh, I know that um, the, the most successful people are reading two books every week, by the way, on average. So it really is important to make sure that you're making time to allow yourself to grow. If you're not growing, you probably are missing out on opportunities. So um, learn the relevant language and vocabulary of the people that you're interacting with or want to interact with. And so, um, maybe make sure that you are asking for clarification because we're talking about improving listening and so sometimes we may have the habit of just going uh-huh 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 but we're just allowing that to go from one ear and out the other ear but if you're really listening to understand you might go would you repeat that I'm processing this and I really want to be able to understand it from your perspective so asking for clarification can be some, one of the most important things that you can do to help you really understand concepts more effectively so again you want to develop better thinking habits you want to make sure that you have the right knowledge make sure that you recognize that your beliefs can in, in effect uh, you have an effect on your interpretation. You want to have access to the information, right, and the skills and the motivation to be able to uh, speak uh, or listen to understand. So let's talk more about improving your listening skills. Uh, one of the things that I like to do if I'm going into a meeting where I'm going to have to help in the decision-making process, and a lot of us have jobs where we have to affect decision-making process or create new systems, taking time to take good notes and being creating a sense of organization that's systematic will help you have better understanding. I know that when I was going to college, I would go and I would listen to my professors and I would use different colored inks for definitions or concepts or 
uh, systems, those really help me really understand the bigger picture of how things fit in. And those are how I earned A's in classes because I really wanted to listen to understand. And so taking notes gave me the ability to review concepts again. And the more we review and reflect on things, the more the information becomes a part of us. We have to also manage distractions. Uh, we all have uh, little voices in our heads that affect the way that um, that we would perceive things. You know, we're doing internal talk. And so we need to recognize that if we are present in the moment and really listening to understand, that's going to help us a lot. So uh, you have to develop a personality and appearance and manner uh, that allows you to be heard by other people. But we also have to recognize that we may be affecting the listening. You know, maybe this person uh, has an aggressive speaking style that, that you don't like, or maybe they have a personality that you don't like. But uh, you, no matter how you, or maybe they don't dress in a way that gives them credibility. But whatever, if those are the filters that you are bringing the communication in, you're probably not hearing the message as much as you possibly could. So you have to really recognize that that internal dialogue about those judgments about other people are affecting the way that you comprehend messages. So language, and maybe there is uh, someone that is cussing and swearing and saying things in inappropriate ways. It doesn't it very often makes us discount their message but if you find that message um, that communication style offensive you may actually be missing the messages behind the actual words itself so that's another way that we have a distraction that's keeping us from getting the full message uh, whether or not you think it's right or wrong you need to be looking beyond that in order to get the real message because there's communication that could be taking place more effectively if you are aware that um, that is an interpersonal distraction so sometimes the topic um, could be offensive maybe there's a topic on gender or race or religion or um, about uh, freedom of of choice or sexual orientation or something that may not uh, be a topic that you are particularly interested in uh, that gives you an emotional feeling about things which may be shutting off your ability to truly hear a message that should not discount the fact that that other intelligent person really has an important message that gives you another part of the picture that could help you make even better decisions. So we have to be aware of how uh, we may have a topical opposition, uh, uh, you know, a, an opposition to whatever the topic is. So sometimes uh, we misinformation or erroneous beliefs. No, no, my mom told me this. And so I'm going to stick with that. I've always believed this. Uh, one of the things that I lecture about is the golden rule. And I think the golden rule is the problem in society. You know, most of us are like, oh, yeah, my mom and my dad and my preacher and, and my uncle and my grandmother, they all believed that the golden rule is right. Do unto others as, as you, that you wish to have done unto you. And that sounds all nice and poetic and everything. But the fact of the matter is, is we're all different. And I like to use the analogy of, hey, you know what, you did a good job. Um, I want to reward you by inviting you over to my house for dinner. We're having liver tonight. And if you love liver, that's awesome. That really is kind of a reward that makes you feel good that you've done a good thing. But other people, if you make you eat liver, it, it could be kind of offensive. And so um, it really is a, absolutely different than what the intent is. But some people love liver and some people don't love liver but we really need to recognize that just because you were told something is the truth you may have the wrong perspective and that's why I believe the platinum rule is the most effective way of being treat others as they wish to be treated you know you can't treat people as you wish to be treated maybe uh, you like to have your eye poked out I know that sounds silly when you're listening because it shows that you care about another person it's a stupid analogy but um, whatever that that 
thing that you like to have done unto you may not be maybe offensive to somebody else. So you have to really be able to honor people uh, in order to be able to effectively have a good communication with them. Respect people. I always like to say meet people where they're at. You know, honor people's rights to feel the way that they do and then consider their perspective. You don't have to take it on necessarily, but if you can understand the way and the reason that they're saying it, then you have the ability to have better uh, information to um, make better decisions. So we may have misinformation or erroneous beliefs that we're acting on. Uh, maybe uh, someone told you that your coworker is an idiot or made, an, made some bad decisions in the past. We all make bad decisions. We're no, nobody is perfect. But if you come into a workplace with that strong held belief, that may mean you may be discounting whatever that person brings in the future, and that may be limiting your ability to have the full bigger picture of what you need to know. All right, so improving listening skills really takes you managing some distractions. You could have bad habits. You be um, some of these bad habits, as I've already talked about, is being overly uh, critical of of people who are speaker uh, speaking. You um, you may avoid new and challenging topics. Maybe you don't want to learn anything new. You may be calling things stupid or uninterested because that is your habit. You know, we are prejudging other people based on how they look or your perception of a person. And that may be limiting uh, how your ability to really listen. So being able to react emotionally or maybe something triggers you the wrong way which makes you not want to hear the whole message. Uh, maybe you seek distractions because you really don't want to listen or you have a bad habit of not listening. And very often we fake giving attention to things. So you really must want to improve your listening skills and recognize the things that may be inhibiting you from getting the right information. So we have to do things called critical thinking and listening. So critical thinking is about being intelligent, you know, being objective giving cautious judgment and evaluation about things. Um, I love the fact that the state of California actually requires schools to teach students critical thinking. I think all states should have critical thinking classes. You know, the, the more that we are looking at things from all perspectives, the better decisions that we can make and the less damage that we have. We become more effective in the long run when we make the best decisions through critical thinking. Our interpretations and chances of, of events. Uh, we have a, a predisposition to seek order and meaning even in the most random of data. So we really have to be able to look at the messages that are coming in and be able to interpret things through the right lenses of the other perspectives that are being shared in order to, to, to do this. And so we have to sort through our own predispositions. Um, we have to recognize that secondhand information isn't always the most accurate information. Maybe we've all played the telephone game. You know, that's the game where you say something and it gets passed on to other people. So that really is uh, a challenge. We have to listen to things and recognize that the further we are from the source, the shakier the facts really are becoming. So we have to do something called sharpening to emphasize the real gist of the mess. And we do things like leveling that de-emphasizes the less essential details. And so we really have to be able to determine what is right, what should we be focusing on, and what really isn't so important in a message and so that's called sharpening and leveling. Wishful thinking is something else. You know, when we have pre-existing beliefs about something, we're extremely strong about uh, uh, an idea, then we will blindly accept new information and direct it if we have consistent beliefs. Maybe there is a particular politician that you love his or her ideas and when anybody says, oh that's I can't believe the president said this or this politician said this or whatever political person personality that you you see um, 
you may uh, you may be hearing somebody that is already cutting off important information or because you love that politician I uh, even you'll probably not oh well the president said it of course it's the truth or this politician said it of course it's it's awesome that person is awesome and so however you feel about whoever is is talking that can affect the way that uh, that you really perceive things so when we like people generally we're going to accept what that person says there are sometimes things called convent or there are things called conventional wisdom and wise sayings and they're not always helpful either um, so my example that I shared with you already is do unto others as you wish to have done unto you. I mean, on the surface that's kind of nice because you think that you're modeling what you expect. But if you really want to interact with people on a better, you really have to, um, to win them over by making sure that you're honoring them with what they expect. So uh, when we are a little more flexible with how we are with other people, being non-judgmental and having more understanding and empathy towards other people, then we're going to start developing uh, relationships where we can cultivate better understanding of things. So um, using uh, confusing language. We need to make sure that we're using the right language uh, so that people can understand things from our own perception so using the right words with the right people really matters because as we talked about before in my first video on communication uh, we are encoding and decoding things and so if we if they're using words that you don't understand you're it's challenging to decode the information uh, in the right way to be able to make the right responses and be able to process things most effectively. And so we need to encode the right meanings when we're speaking to other people. And When we don't understand things, we need to stop and say, well, that's a little confusing. I don't understand exactly what you're saying. Can you tell me that in another, um, in different words? So really wanting to understand gives you the ability to listen better, and we do this through better critical thinking abilities. So let's talk about your responsibility as a speaker you have to recognize that people think faster than one talks so you're processing things uh, really fast and when you're speaking you may not be putting the words together in a way that are right best um, so that your message is best received so you really have to take the time to think about how can I formulate these sentences to best convey my message and so that's a good practice to get into you have to be responsible for intensive hearing and objective listening so avoid confusing language don't be reckless and, and over generalize things uh, don't make irrelevant um, arguments, um, don't underrepresent things or evidence, and don't attack people. So um, set yourself up for success to be understood by uh, making sure that you are speaking in a way that will be best. You get to make the choices in how you send a message. So uh, avoid language that's confusing, don't be reckless with overgeneralizations, don't make uh, uh, relevant, relevant arguments, um, don't underrepresent evidence, and don't attack people. Consider the total communication process as coactive and a two way process. We influence outcomes of how people perceive us. Take responsibility for that and then do it right. Just because you've done something over and over again and seem to get the right effects, you may be causing more damage in the long run than you realize. So we, in summary, we have to listen for different reasons and assume different styles of listening. We do it all the time. If we're being reluctant, if we're being appreciative, if we're being empathetic, we are being uh, comprehensive, uh, critical, and aggressive in our listening style. So choose the right that's going to help you. You know, empathetic, appreciative, and comprehensive, these are going to help you be able to um, get the right message. Uh, listen 
it really being able to listen really is a five phase process. Remember sensation, selection, interpretation, evaluation, and then response. And so in that process, this is where we're going to be able to really get down to uh, the message. Are we receiving the full message? Are we interpreting the message the right way? Are we evaluating it with the right criteria in order to respond? So responses can be internal or uh, interpersonal uh, and we are uh, we have external and feedback that we've already talked about and so being able to make sure that uh, we recognize the process of listening and and what's taking place in both ourselves and the other people and how that could be affecting outcomes. So some basic areas for listening improvement essentially are motivation, access, and skills. We can improve our motivation by looking for motivation in a larger areas of interest, you know. Relate the topic it can to things that are important to you, your own selfish interests. What's in it for me? and then translate the problem into an intellectual challenge. We can improve our listening through access, manage or eliminate noise, avoid fatigue, accommodate hearing deficiencies, learn relevant language or vocabulary, especially through reading, and ask for clarification. I didn't quite understand that. You, you said some things that didn't make sense to me. Can you repeat that last part? To improve listening skills, use uh, key word note-taking and, and then manage your distractions effects. So um, having a system in place to really listen uh, to when things are important and so you're processing them effectively. Avoid major distractions and these could be physical things that are happening on the outside or in interpersonal. Remember the prejudgments or ideas and beliefs that can affect the way that we perceive our understanding of things. We have bad habits and you need to recognize them. Maybe you are criticizing people. That's affecting the way that you're receiving the message. Uh, avoid, you, maybe you like to avoid new and challenging topics. Well, if you're in that habit, that's going to affect your level of understanding. Calling the topic stupid or uninteresting, prejudging, reacting emotionally, seeking distractions and then faking attention. All of these things, these bad habits, affect the way that you receive each message. You are the only one that can control your effectiveness or has and the most effect on your effectiveness and that's a two-way street. So you need to be a better listening because it affects everything in your life. So some keys or rules for good listening is find areas of an interest. Judge content not delivery, you know, focus on the situation, not the, not the person. Hold your fire, listen for ideas, be flexible, work at listening, resist distractions, exercise your mind, really do, don't be lazy about your thinking, keep an open mind, and utilize the difference between thought and speech. You know, make sure you're allowing people to process things and make sure you've processed things and then critical thinking is really about exiting intelligent, objective, cautious judgment and evaluations. Remember, you know, it's not what happens to us, it's what we choose to do. So we really need to make the best decisions possible by really thinking through things effectively, objectively. So some areas to be recognized to improve critical thinking and listening are how chance events are interpreted, how secondhand language is used, the impact of wishful thinking, uh, your re the relevance on conventional wisdom and why sayings and language confusion. Uh, objective listening really is promoted by avoiding language confusion, overgeneralization, irrelevant arguments, and then personality attacks. So I know this has been a long video, almost 40 minutes, but hopefully you recognize that listening truly is uh, affects our success on every level and we need to take responsibility for doing the right thing at the right time with the right person. So that's my lesson on critical listening. You might have to listen to this uh, video several times to get the full message of it because it really is a powerful lesson that could affect every area of your life and every circumstance in your life in both a positive or negative way. 
Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for your time. I hope that you have a great day because only you get to choose how you feel about it. I'm Dr. Paul Gerhardt.